just not long taken on a new build. We've got a Rolls-Royce 1937 Phantom 3. And I just wanted to show you my design process and, and what we've got going on with the build. We're gonna try and follow it the whole way through. Um, so I just wanted to show you the body quickly that um, I've pulled off, just so you can see where we started to what we're, what we're gonna be working towards. So we've taken it, it's just sitting outside at the moment. You can just see um, how big how big the panel is, the panels that we've got here are. You can see just like how large, how large of a body is, how wide, how wide it is, how tall it is. Um, this would have still had a running board, a running board and you can see already just the body side is, is already like my hip high. Um, the owner, the owner come to us because he saw the Auburn that we were building, which I can show you later. Um, and he wanted the boat tail design. Uh, as you can see, this was a um, this was a two door drop head. The car originally started off as a four door limousine, uh, and then was originally and then was later on cut down to a two door drop head. Uh, and then the owner wants another rebody uh, to make it a to make it a boat tail design. So once again, you can see. So this is like sort of the original coach work here um, from the front. Uh, the guards would have been original. The running boards similar, and then the rear half um, was what the, was in the rebody. So we're going to be keeping the six wheel, the six wheel equip. Uh, the guards. One of the main things that the owner wanted um, wanted was definitely the boat tail. He liked the sweepiness, uh, the swoopy sort of running board design that I done on the Auburn. Um, and then also too, the front of this guard uh, is extremely heavy. He wanted it to be more like a. Uh, a Phantom 2, which is like in the uh, 20s and 30s, uh, early 30s and late 20s. Uh, they had more of a sort of swoopy sort of design on the front where there was a more of a more of a cutaway. So trying to take out this like heavy volume that there's got in the front of this guard. Um, as you can see as well, it's very, it's very like very high. The shape tapers off very quickly. So it's just, it's just a, it's a little clunky. Like it, it just doesn't have a real sort of like beautiful, beautiful design. It's very, very heavy for how, how light it is here. So, um, yeah, another thing that I'll, I'll point out now before we go, um, before we go look at the car, uh, cause it's an important part of how I design, like sort of looked at the design. Um, you can see here, the bonnet sort of comes, it would have come in on this sort of, um, this sort of angle here. And you can see how much it kicks out to make, to get the width of the body. So that's something to take note of and I can show how I, how I started with that design. Um, I'll overlay some photos as well so you can see the body together and how it started. But I just wanted to, you know, put my body up against it so you can sort of see how, just how big the car was. So coming to the, so we started with the back of the car. Um, I left the front half on the car in the in my initial design stage, um, and the reason was for that was like you could see, you could see that the bonnet um, had that. It was projecting the the bonnet projects a line, and then it sort of t like really kicked away on the original body. So what I had done is that I ran this first piece of wire, this main, uh, this big main arc basically, and I projected through the bonnet edge, through into the door edge. And then I'm, so, cause essentially what I'm trying to do is project a line from the front of the car that wraps all the way around to the tip of the boat tail. So with that, I ran my first couple of sort of stringer lines to create a, um, I guess a silhouette um, of what I was like, like what I wanted for the car. So I ran across the top line and I ran a bottom, um, a bottom edge just to sort of give me some bases to, to start with. Um, from then on, we've just started to, I ran a, um, an another sort of hard profile through, through here and another hard one along, along the bottom here. And that sort of gave me um, sort of roughly where the edge of the, the transition between the, the guard and the quarter panel sort of would start. So if there is going to be a parting line, it's going to be around that space. So I sort of wanted to dictate what that inner edge was going to be. So where this reverse would sort of flow down into and then turn into its compound curve. Um, so, and all that's done in like uh, an eight mil um, or a six mil wire. So like a bigger, heavier gauge. Um, from then I've just used 3.2 millimeter TIG wire uh, to tr try and just lay reverse profiles through all of this space um, to give me 
just to give me the, the shape and so I can visualize, visualize what's happening. I've just got tape on there at the moment. It sort of fills in the space so you're not looking through and seeing all the chassis and, and all that sort of stuff. And it's very good for the owner um, to be able to see you know, a, solid, a solid form, um, see how the panel transitions, etc. So what I'm trying to do is um, I've taken a lot of design inspiration from the, some of the iconic the iconic Rolls-Royce cars uh, from, the, from the 20s and 30s. Uh, I looked at some of their boat tail designs. Some of them were, were, they were nice, but there was areas of design that I thought, um, you know, it could be improved upon. So that's what I've tried to do. I've still tried to keep quite a sharp sort of boat tail, but I've tried to lay it over further so we can really get the volume of the car down. Um, initially, the car probably would have been the door edge probably would have been like, you know, up here. So I've dropped it a good, you know, 250 to 300 mil um, down. When looking at the side of the car, um, I wanted to try and give it a real, I wanted to try and give it like a sort of a real look of a sweep. So this is like sort of the dash edge comes down in quite an accelerated radius here and then it tapers off and it actually shoots back uphill and, and has a continual sort of radius as it shoots around the back of the boat tail. Um, I think it's going to be quite a uh, quite a unique design for a Rolls Royce, but also, um, also too, I think it's going to be it's going to be quite beautiful. So, um, running board. That's one of the things that the the owner really uh, wanted was the swoopy um, reverse curve. You can see here on the Auburn behind you, um, but that the the running board's got that big sweep in it. So I really wanted to, um, the owner, this is one of the things that the owner loved when he saw it was this big sweep here. So I wanted to try and bring that into this car. I didn't want to have it as extreme because with the Rolls Royce, just the construction is so different. The Auburn's got, the guards are sitting, you know, quite out wide where this is, these were sort of made to be closer to the body. So I don't have such an accelerated sweep here, but it's definitely there and it's quite um, visually, visually very nice. Um, so yeah, we've just got, I've just tried to cut a lot of the height down in the, um, height, height down in the guard. The old guard would have come up to about half the, half the headlight here. So it's dropped down probably 50 to 75 mil. And I've tried to keep sort of that volume in it a little bit longer. So you can see the radius is still quite heavy and then it only starts to taper out um, back through here as it gets closer to the door edge. And it's, but it's a lot of consistent shapes. So as it comes through here, it's a sort of tapered sort of volume comes down. Once it gets to about here, the radius stays consistent all the way through. And uh, one of the things I like to try and do with my designs as well is um, repeat, um, repeat shape. Um, like, uh, so you can sort of, you can see correlation when you look at one thing and you, you see another part of the car and they, they look visually uh, very cohesive um, and you don't sort of understand it. But this radius here is the same as the radius here, same as the radius here, things like that. So I just like to try and repeat a lot of shapes, not to make it look too, like you don't want it to match too much, but it just, it makes things work a little bit nicer when you see uh, repeated, repeated elements. Um, coming around the front uh, with the bonnet, uh, I've made a bit of a change. Rolls Royce, uh, they've got the three piece, um, so like the, the bonnet side sort of lifts up and that sort of piano hinges in the center. So you can't put too much of a change through the top because it needs to be straight because of the center, the center hinge. But what I have done, I've put a sweep from the here running through the car. Not, not much of a sweep, but just slight enough that it will just sort of flow through the, through the whole vehicle. Um, I also too had made a change here. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna repeat the radius that's on the edge of the, of the grill here um, and follow it through. Initially they did have a bead on the, a little bead on the very edge of the, of the bonnet and it just, it didn't make the bonnet, like the surface, of surface uh, alignment wasn't correct. So I'm gonna try and, um, try and fix that with the design. And, and then on the front, this is what I was talking about earlier where the owner wanted a real sort of cutaway shape like the early 20s um, sort of Phantom 2, Phantom 1 cars. A little bit of a design challenge actually because the Phantom 2s, Phantom 1s were a I-beam front end so the chassis was a completely different construction. So I've tried to add that element of the earlier cars into the later model which the chassis is different. So we're trying to cover up as much of the inner 
the inner sort of workings of it as we can, but still, um, still giving that, that high cutaway. So um, yeah, a little, little bit of a tough challenge trying to fill in all these empty spaces, but overall um, I'm quite happy with how, with how it's all, uh, all come apart. I think it's uh, extremely unique and yeah, it's gonna be a fun one. So I'm gonna, next week I'll start to move on to, you know, paper patterning and starting to shape the reverse curve um, the al in aluminium. Uh, so yeah, it'd be cool to show you guys through the process. Um, just to finish off the video, I wanted to sort of go through and give you guys a little bit of a, a shop tour. Um, the Auburn in particular is a car that um, probably has, you guys have seen a lot on social media, et cetera. So, um, I just wanted to show, talk through what I'd done. When I was filming this car, I had a client's car in the shop that I wasn't able to, um, it wasn't able to be seen. So unfortunately we weren't able to show as much of this car as we wanted to, um, just cause it, the filming logistics just, just didn't work out. But we can go over it now, have a quick um, sort of look. Um, everything on this car is basically completely scratch built from a standard 1935 Auburn speed. So the only thing that really uh, can cross over is the center of the door skin. Everything else I've, I've changed in every way. Um, made the grille a little bit wider, added sweeps, um, put more volume in the guards. Um, one that put the running board, I created that running board design. Um, they were never had, had them originally on the Auburns. Um, yeah, I've just tried to create something that's really, I guess it's just a rolling, a rolling artwork, something that's just very, um, very beautiful, um, but you know, it looks like it's, it looks like it's moving when it's standing still. Uh, really, took a lot of uh, design inspiration from the Fagoni bodies um, of the '30s, like the the Delahays and um, the different sort of models that he used to work on. So. This car will uh, end up being, you know, running driving vehicle. Um, I've got an Aston Martin V12 for it. Um, so yeah, maybe, we, you know, further on down the track in future videos, we can show some of the chassis construction and, and stuff like that. The outer body is now basically finished its shaping. Um, we're starting to do inner, inner structures, um, firewall, etc. cetera. Um, and then once we, um, our chassis design is, is complete, which it's only a week or two away, uh, we can start getting it on the table, start jigging it up and, and making floor pans and, and all the rest of it. So super, super cool build. Um, and then yeah, like this is, I've never really, I actually haven't done a shop tour since we've been open. We've been around now since September 21. Um, so just sort of be cool to show you guys sort of like the machinery that we have around here. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're partnered with uh, Machinery House here in Forbes, so super grateful for their support. Um, they're able to, you know, help us out with, um, help us out with machinery and we help them out with, uh, you know, the tool development. Um, you know, we get the new prototype machines, test them, break them, see where they need to be improved. Um, and it's a, it's a great relationship. So they, they looked after me, you know, so we've got uh, 20, you know, 2,400 guillotines and folders. Um, We've got our bench, um, our pedestal drills and uh, band saws and stuff over in that corner. So that's more of like the, I guess, fab sort of sort of gear um, coming down this way. Um, also very glad to be partnered with SIG Weld. So they've, you know, our TIG welders and our, our MIGs are all, all supplied by those guys as well as our 3M. So our sandpapers, um, all our consumables are all, all 3M product. Um, so thanks to those guys for, for helping us out. Here we've got our new, um, the new prototype power hammer. So this is the 37 inch, uh, so 37 inch throat. And uh, it's got a four horsepower motor. So this is like the, um, it's like a Yoda style um, slapping um, hammer, as well as um, being able to locked off, being locked off to a reciprocating machine. So um, yeah, at the moment it's just in its development stage. Like I've been adjusting, adjusting tooling. Um, actually, you guys would have probably seen um, Carl was over at my shop uh, from Make It Custom. He was over in the last month and he was working on a little bit on the Rolls Royce. So I've since adjusted some of the tooling that he was using. It was we noticed that it was too harsh. That was the first time that tooling had been used. So I've modified it. Um, I tested it yesterday. It's actually working, working really nicely. The all the marking is. is very like it's not even noticeable now so um, so that's great so we can start to take that back and and make that a better um, better product 
Another little power hammer, I use this just predominantly as a um, reciprocating machine. And then we've got a range of English wheels. So we've got the smaller, smaller inch one here, smaller throat. Uh, it's got the two inch dies, which is just real handy for, you know, getting into certain reverse curves, um, just areas where the, the normal three inch die won't be able to get into. Um, this was the first um, prototype machine that Heron Forbes had sent me. Um, this is hard, this done half of the Auburn. This and it's a it's a beautiful machine. It's got a nice. Um, it's quite rigid, uh, but it's got enough flex in it where it's not going to um, you know overstretch and all that sort of stuff. Just standard sort of bead roller with all the dies. Uh, this was a new prototype again. This is the bigger the bigger English wheel and this done the other half of the Auburn. So this one's got a meter throat. It's got a bigger cutaway in the bottom. So it's really great for, uh, really great for getting certain panel shapes into it. Um, they've since they made an adjustment to this here where you can actually unbolt this, flip it around 90 degrees. Um, so you can get like a motorcycle tank or something like that in there. So just, that was just something that I said to them that it'd just be handy to be able to get that little bit extra access. Um, so, We've got all, obviously got our post dollies, all that sort of stuff. I've got Carl was uh, great enough to uh, give me one of his uh, personalized Mother Tucker hammers, which is super cool. We've got our little English wheel on the wall, which has just got a one inch die, one inch anvils. It's just really handy to get into all those, um, you know, tighter areas that you just, you just can't get into um, and the saves having to do, you know, hammer work, etc. cetera. Um, obviously in our nylon mallets, uh, we've got all our sweeps and stuff on the wall. Uh, we should have, I'm actually in the process now of having um, these for sale. Um, so we'll keep an eye out on that. Uh, and then here we've just got our shrinkers and stretchers. Two really good machines. This pendulum style is um, quite heavy duty. It's rated for, I think it's two and a half mil, but it, it has done, I've seen it done um, up to three mil before. Um, really handy machine. Um, like nice long um, dies so you can sort of, you know, if you need to break an edge or, or um, just the size of the dies, it really helps for doing a, a long consistent flange, which is really great. And the pendulum style is really uh, quite comfortable uh, ergonomically. And then we've got this um, awesome little machine, there's a round jaw machine, heaps of uh, access to get into the tools um, and you can get a real tight flange as well with the round jaw. And they, come with, which are in it right now, it's got the aluminium, the soft jaw, um, it's got a finer, finer too, so it's nicer on the aluminium. Um, got our French curves hanging up on the wall, something that I use a lot in, in a lot of my design. It's just um, nice to lay out lines with those beautiful sort of sweeps they have. Um, heaps of profile gauges, melamotive splines, super good for, for doing, um, checking your metal work and, and making sure all the uh, the body runs consistently uh, and all that sort of stuff. And then obviously various sort of measuring, uh, measuring tools. I'm, yeah, quite, as you can tell, I like things to be nice and organized and you know where it is and it's, it's all good. So yeah, but that pretty much wraps up, that pretty much wraps up the video um, for today. So uh, thanks heaps for, for watching. Um, I hope to try and bring you guys one. I'm, gonna, I'm really going to push to try and get you guys one every week. Carl was really pushing on me when he was over here in Australia. So um, yeah, I'll do my best to try and get it out there and like and subscribe and, and share it around. And yeah, until the next one. Cheers.